Yeah, a less than smooth transition. Welcome to Inside Crashing, which is what we're going to call the show from now on. <laughs> I think that's what we need to call it. Our show airs live on Tuesday nights when we can air live. Uh, if last week was any indication, not all the time. Uh, from 10 p.m. to midnight-ish EST via YouTube live event at theownpage.com slash live. The show consists of two distinct segments, the first hour streaming right here on YouTube. The second uncensored portion of the show airs exclusively on the Quest Vaping Network at www.vapetv.com slash the quest. Uh, one of the things you may notice is if you're logged into YouTube, we have disabled chat. If you expand the full description on the episode, you'll see a link to the own page slash rumble and that is where you can join the discussion so please feel free to do that how's everybody doing this week i'm tired um <laughs> and happy and and more tired it was a long long day at work yes, we did yes we did 96 degrees here in sunny arizona it's yeah it's not that warm here but it is getting <laughs> warmer isn't it ed uh, yeah, it's above 32. I'm a happy guy. Yeah, and um, we um, yeah we saw the sun for one of the first times this week on a very very nice day, and unfortunately I was stuck at work, so <laughs> that's the way it always seems to go. Uh, we do have a little bit of a recap this week. Uh, one of the first things that we want to talk about, of course, is uh, we did bring up uh, palcohol. So and, and, Jane, me... and James, before you get to that, our, our buddy Jerry could not be with us tonight. Oh, yes. Because yes, he is, is still working. <laughs> <laughs> he so got stuck at work. Jerry is with us in spirit, so. Yes, in spirit. there, buddy. So anyone who has a spirit, drink up. <laughs> yes, for Jerry. Um, so uh, we talked about palcohol last week, and one of the things we... Dane and, you know... Ed has, is constantly looking at these Chinese sites, and he found this. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> this is apparently some kind of candy where you dip a popsicle in uh, some kind of powder inside a toilet. No, and, that's a candy uh, plunger. Oh, that's what that is. A it's a little plunger. candy plunger. Yeah. Which... Yeah. So uh, this this would be ideal for palcohol. I'm thinking you carry palcohol around in a little toilet and dip your lollipop yeah. into there. And you could teach your kid how to be a plumber. <laughs> yeah. Just make him pull his pants down low. <laughs> and then the other thing we wanted to talk about and we didn't mention it this week is, um, so again, um, a little bit on the salacious side, very calculating. Um, it's got a little kid reaching for an e-cig. Uh, just ridiculous, and I'm, I'm really disappointed to see this. Yeah, because, I mean, that could be a knife, a pen, ever, and that, like that we said true. last week, put that stuff away out of harm's reach. That's right. Yep. So, uh, speaking of tobacco-free CA, the first story we've got, of course, is... Uh, this week, in what appeared to be shocking revelation, uh, Tobacco Free CA did post sort of a, a reversal, or I guess they kind of compromised on their position a little bit. And my guess is this is because of the feedback they got via social media, uh, which I'm sure was staggering. I mean, obviously, we had uh, uh, Stefan with the Not Blowing Smoke. Uh, Dot org site going up as well as a huge media campaign via Twitter and Facebook. Uh, so I'm sure they were getting a lot of blowback from this campaign. And uh, what they've done is they've launched, well, they haven't really launched anything, but they did put this up on their Facebook page. Are e-cigarettes less harmful than traditional cigarettes? And then this is what they had to say about the subject. Yes, the research and studies have all signs pointing to e-cigarettes being less harmful than traditional cigarettes. Uh, truly shocking. I mean, uh, <laughs> none of us knew that, right? That uh, <laughs> e-cigarettes were safer than combustible cigarettes. And then they go on to explain uh, that combustible uh, cigarettes are harmful because of all the chemicals and the ingredients, etc. 
Um, you know what? I'm getting a lot of feedback from chat that the stream may be kind of sketchy right now. Yeah, it's uh, your video feed to us is very wonky. It looks it it looks good on the own page. Skype okay. is garbage. So hmm. that's kind of strange. Well, okay, we're just going to power through it then. And uh, again, last week we did the episode offline. That is one of the advantages to doing it <laughs> offline. The content's still there. Unfortunately, the live interaction is not, so we do miss that. Um, one of the things that I noticed, though, is there were a lot of people that were looking at this post and saying, oh, well, Tobacco Free CA has seen the light. Um, we can't necessarily say that because, once again, they, there's a getcha there. There's always a getcha. And one of the things that they mentioned in their statement is switching completely from traditional cigarettes to only e-cigarettes, a person will inhale fewer toxic chemicals to get the same dose of nicotine. And we think that's a really good thing. Many of you have commented how much better you feel already. You're not inhaling 7,000 chemicals in your body. Um, they close it with so yes, studies suggest e-cigarettes are less harmful than traditional cigarettes, but that doesn't make them safe. And here's my complaint. You have to deal with a scale when you're talking about the safety of items. When they just say it's not safe, people think it's unsafe immediately. They right. think it's an extremely risky behavior to engage in and you know, people shouldn't be touting this as an alternative. That's not true. If you're talking about reduced risk, you've got tobacco, cigarettes, or combustible products at one end at 100%, and then vapor products at what everybody said is 1% to 5% in relative risk. And then smokeless is there as well. You know, I think it's like 3 to 7%, depending on which version of smokeless you go with. Of course, Dane and I are both snoozers as well, so there you go, a little... Uh, a little plug in snus of course if you're using swedish pasteurized snus it is very low in tsnas uh, especially in comparison to some of the popular smokeless products in the states enough about snus because we could wax poetic about that day and that is very true it would be a long long diatribe um one of the things that i noticed here and i think ed you were going to cover some of this um in the Facebook post, there were several quotes. I'm going to bring up the first one here, so why don't you go ahead and read that. Yeah, there were some interesting comments from the fa uh, from Facebook post. Um, Greg, uh, DJG, um, he said, uh, you answered the question, are they less harmful than traditional cigarettes? Very, y You answered those very well. The question wasn't, are they safe? There was no reason for the last sentence, life is not safe. He said, are safer than tobacco yes by an and order of magnitude they are safer that's something oh, that the cdc likes to tout dane don't they like to say you know uh the number of e-liquid poisons poisonings is up 600 percent again it really depends on uh, right. the order of magnitude how many cases are reported but in this case we are talking about definites we know cigarettes is at one end and vapor products is at the other continue there and uh, the response from tobacco free ca hi greg it is important to keep in mind that while there is a lot of misinformation out there the facts are clear while e-cigarettes are less harmful that doesn't make them safe studies have shown that there are toxic chemicals present in the mainstream mm -hmm. and secondhand e-cigarette aerosol emissions mm -hmm. at least 10 of these chemicals including nicotine are on California's Proposition 65 list of chemicals known to cause cancer, birth defects, and other reproductive harm. So there you go again. And they they cite a bunch of links here um, to the Clean Indoor Air Act and tobacco control and a couple of medical journals as well. And then um, Ed, there's a second comment there, and this one is pretty interesting as well. From from Rupert, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so Rupert Collar. I did a correlation between chemicals analysis from an e-cig and the air samples from London, Birmingham, and Glasgow. <clears throat> I did this just for giggles based, based on info sought from the government agencies 
and there is less CO and heavy metals, etc. Nothing significant, but it appeared to me that breathing air in one of those cities is worse for me than vaping. Just saying. Yeah, so and, before before we continue with the response, um, Ed, Dane, it's, it's good to know that CDPH has hired robots to answer the questions posed by actual people. I mean... <laughs> There's a definite trend here. Each of their replies mentioning Prop 65, and of course they also bring up the chemicals known to cause cancer without any quantification of dosage. So this is where we get into issues because everybody else, you know, Brad Rodu has an excellent blog talking about uh, tobacco harm reduction, and he always calls up the studies that quantify the amount of TSNAs, the amount of carcinogens in a product. Um, and they haven't done anything like that here. And they're totally disregarding the, e the, the clean air studies that have been done on the exhaled vapor as well. So this is the only retort to that. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, no Will Robinson. I, I swear, Danger. they're robots. It's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's true. Laughable. And, and they responded. Tobacco Free California responded, Hi, Rupert. It's important to look at the facts. Studies have shown that there are toxic chemicals present in the mainstream in secondhand e-cigarette aerosol emissions. Again, this is just regurgitated. At least 10 of these chemicals, including nicotine, are on California's Prop 65 list of chemicals known to cause cancer, birth defects, or other reproductive harm. And then they go on to place those said links again. So it's clear that they are going to continue to do this until people stop asking them questions. Yeah. Now, now getting, getting back to Rupert, Rupert's, uh, um, the last thing he said was just saying, which was very funny because I saw this on Jeannie's uh, Facebook page and it was a little type of meme. Uh, I end a lot, of, a lot of my sentences with just saying because ending the sentence with dumbass would probably be considered offensive. <laughs> 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 High yeah, five, Jeannie yeah. K. <laughs> F and Genie K, man. Yeah. So Genie anytime K. you hear just saying, it just means dumbass. <laughs> yeah. So um, <clears throat> Greg Connolly, never one to mince words, did, of course, weigh in on this discussion with this. How about putting that into an ad instead of flashing lung cancer on the screen before showing e cigarette products? Very yeah. good point. Excellent point, and there were also people, I know Matt from Suck My Mod weighed in and said, how about you take down these outrageous ads, if this is your stance, and you agree that e-cigarettes are safer, and they can be a valuable tool for somebody seeking to quit smoking, how about taking down the ads? <laughs> yes, Ed, More wasted money. More <laughs> wasted money. Yeah, says, did Ed just say Mimi instead of meme? meme. Yes, he did. Sorry, I just learned what that was this year. He calls them memes. Memes, okay? You can all call it what you want. That's right. Memes. I have an app meme. <laughs> James um, is the king of memes, too. He has a ton stored on his I computer. Do, I about collect it. them, man. I you really do. do. Yes. Oh, also, just to let you know, we did record some of our pre show call. Um, and. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what. We're going to play some for the after show because we got in, we get into some really crazy discussions during pre-show calls. It's um, true. Uh, let's see. Among the topics discussed, of course, the ever-classic story that happened to me. My father pooped on top of a beaver dam at one point <laughs> while we were out fishing one day. Um, <laughs> Don't give away nice that story. story. Don't yes. give it away. You got to do it. The DNR found us, show. by the way. There's more to it. But, um, yes, and it led yeah. to a lot of comments. <laughs> <laughs> they were, oh yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is this is our main topic of the evening. First off, I'd like to apologize on behalf of Inside Vaping. This is a very complicated topic, and hopefully everybody is available uh, able to follow along. We would also like to fa thank Vanden Schmidt, owner on Facebook, for his excellent post listing the various reasons for the vehement opposition that we've recently faced as an industry. And we've seen it. Dane and Ed, I mean, look at, look at all the different states across the U.S. that are either in the process of developing legislation or trying to pass said legislation restricting the use of vapor products. 
and uh, you know, in a lot of cases, uh, applying a punitive tax to it. Yeah. They're they're trying to make up revenue, folks. And part of what we're going to do with this article is explain explain portions of this. Right. It is the MSA, which is the Tobacco Master Settlement Agreement and fiscal irresponsibility at state levels. In November 1998, the tobacco industry in 46 states reached what is known as the TMA, Tobacco Master Settlement Agreement, or the TMSA. Four states reached separate uh, settlements. This group deal exempted the industry from legal liability for the harm caused by tobacco use. In return, the tobacco companies agreed to make annual payments in perpetuity to the states to fund anti-smoking campaigns and public health programs. The industry guaranteed a minimum of $206 billion, with a B, over the first 25 years. While a, re while a requirement that the states use these funds as intended was not written into the agreement, it was anticipated that they would do so. They haven't. Yeah, so only a small fraction of the money has gone to tobacco prevention ads. Instead, the states have used the windfall of money coming in from the MSA for various and unrelated expenditures. Let's, let's take, for example, Alaska. $3.5 in settlement money was spent on shipping docks. In Niagara County, New York, 700 thousand went for a public golf course's sprinkler system and 24 million for a county jail and an office building and in north carolina this is the ultimate irony 42 million of the settlement funds actually went to tobacco farmers for modernization and marketing ridiculous so so why are things heating up why are many battleground states across the u.s suddenly turning their attention to vapor products and seeking punitive taxation, restrictive litigations, and the like. Nine states, Alaska, California, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Rhode Island, and West Virginia, and Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, and Guam. Guam's part of us? What do I know? <laughs> Decided to get as much of those annual payments as fast as they could by mortgaging any future payments as collateral and issuing bonds. They traded their future lifetime income for for cash today, at only pennies on the dollar. Yeah. So let's let's talk about this for a minute. Um, so, looking back at those states, okay, what do we know? California. It's a really hot topic there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Their debt is massive. This, yeah. Yeah. They have massive debt. Michigan is that's a one of the worst. If you, yeah. it's a fiscal nightmare. Yep. Um, a great place to visit. My wife and I go there a couple times a year. Uh, we love it up there. But at the same time, there are some serious problem areas in the state, and they have a huge problem with debt. Um, Ohio is another one. Of course, my friend Frank, living out there, he can attest to the fact he's said it. He said it many hearings, and they are going hot and heavy after punitive taxation on vapor products there. Um, it, it, it's crazy. Ed, go ahead. I, I'm surprised that, really, I'm surprised Illinois isn't on that because we sold our tollway system. I mean, income. That's we true. sold the mm. city sold all the parking meters. I mean, I'm just just because they wanted money now. So, but in other words, the MSA money is G O N E gone. The article in the New York Times goes on <clears throat> to further explain the implications on this move. A typical bond is like an interest-only loan with a balloon payment in 30 years. But to avoid having to pay yearly interest payments, these 12 chose to issue capital appreciation bonds deferring all interest payments and repayment for up to 50 years. Then the entire amount is due, with no plans <clears throat> made as to how it will be repaid. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. By the time these bonds come due, the legislators who approve them will be retired or just plain dead. <laughs> yeah, and because of the high probability that these bonds will never be
made, they had to be sold. 12 states issued $22.6 billion in bonds, receiving only $573.2 million in cash. With compounded interest, they'll have to repay $67.1 billion. Now, to put that in perspective... This is the best example that anybody could make to put this in perspective, and this is key. Right. Imagine borrowing $200,000 to buy a house today and your children having to pay back $234 million in 40 or 50 years. That's the scale of this problem. And some of the states went even further. Michigan will have to pay back more than 1,800 times the amount it borrowed. It won't be easy to fix it. The state legislators are the only ones that can refuse to authorize a bailout or guarantee of the bonds. And yet, despite the ominous examples of Rhode Island and New Jersey, there is still active discussion of guarantees by other states. The only possible solution seems to be direct action by you, the voters, in the name of future taxpayers who could call for and pass a referendum prohibiting the issue of new tobacco settlement bonds and stopping the restructuring of existing bonds without voter approval. You know, guys, I'm wondering if some of the banks in these states mentioned in this article weren't trying to recoup some of the lost millions from the housing crash and bad loan writing that was happening just a few short years ago. Take a look at Michigan and their part of this debt. 1,800 times the amount of the loan Detroit was clearly a city in complete ruin, Mm -hmm. and I have to believe that some of this money, if not a large portion of it, went to fund the bailout of Detroit. Yeah, that's that's probably true. So so let's get this straight. These 12 states issued CAPs, capital appreciation bonds, received only $573 million in cash, but have to pay back $67 billion dollars. That is ridiculous. One million (laughs) dollars. It's it's like Doctor Evil trying to get one million dollars. I mean, it's it's just ridiculous. It's laughable. (laughs) This is guaranteed money that they want in a a bulk payout. I mean, this is the equivalent of going winning the lotto and taking it all up front, getting taxed on it, not investing any of it, just blowing through it. The money's got to be paid back. This is a crazy thing. So let's talk about that. Another crazy point to consider is that under the deals, the debts must be repaid with settlement money and not tax dollars. This is key. Still, taxpayers lose out when tobacco income that could be spent on other government services is diverted to paying off caps. And states can't simply walk away from the debt. Bondholders have a right to further tobacco payments even after a default. So what's the takeaway from all this? They, the states, these battleground states, they don't want you to stop using combustible products, particularly in the states we mentioned earlier. It takes potential punitive syntax revenue out of their coffers, which is something that we've seen across the entire market with tobacco share losing. Um, I, I believe now it's reached the levels that it was at in 1997. Correct. Um, so it continues to lose market share. If the amount of smokers switching to exclusive vapor products continues to grow, it's going to be catastrophic for states with debt resulting from caps. Closed systems, however, do count towards the, the money. The tobacco settlement ultimately has to pay back to the bondholders, regardless to whether states default on those loans. So again, you see, you see closed systems getting a free pass, these products from Big Tobacco getting a free pass. That's why, folks. Absolutely, that's why, because that money can be used to pay off those caps, and that's incredibly important to them. So the more money they make on closed systems, the quicker they can try to pay off those caps. Yeah, true. All right, so what do we got up next here? We have got a, uh, a an excellent article from Americans for Tax Reform. It is a case study in the slow rise of excise taxes. 
Over the last two years, a new target for the public health wretches has emerged, replacing the long-standing number one target of sin taxes aimed at extracting money from low-income consumers. Electronic cigarettes and vapor products are disruptive, innovative technology, are products that are accomplishing that that the public health community never could. They're getting people to quit smoking. Some estimates and national surveys suggest that more than 6 million people in the United States are daily vapors. This comes at a time when cigarette smoking rates are amongst the lowest they've been in years. A recent history of cigarette tax increases should provide some insight into the future of e-cigarette and vapor product taxes. Should more states add excise taxes to the books with regards to the products? Uh, they at Americans for Tax Reform have noted before, e-cigarettes should not be taxed like tobacco products. Currently, only Minnesota and North Carolina impose sin taxes on the products, with Minnesota taxing them at 95%, up 75% from two years ago. The average excise tax on a pack of cigarettes in 1999 was only 38.9 cents. Today, the current average excise tax is $1.54 per pack. States have increased tobacco taxes about five times as often as they have raised alcohol taxes between 2000 and 2015, with 111 increases over that time, according to the National Association of State Budget Officers. We're going to show you a chart here up on the screen. And there yeah, it is. It. Yeah, I've got it. As you can see, the years during and immediately following a recession saw the largest number of cigarette tax increases. In 2003, 19 states increased tobacco taxes, 15 in 2004 and 16 in 2010. What does any of this have to do with e-cigarettes and vapor products? Many state legislators have begun to realize that their increasing reliance on tobacco fund a wide range of programs and the taxes on the books in a state, there won't be efforts to raise it slowly over time. Minnesota's tax on, on e-cigarettes began at 75% and is now 95%. Some taxes are far more damaging than others, but the fact remains it's easier to fend off new taxes than to fight higher taxes. Just ask smokers. Now, guys, we touched on this subject a bit last week, talking about focusing our efforts on taxation bills as opposed to public usage bans. This story clearly indicates the necessity to be vigilant, not only with new taxes to vapor products, but to existing taxes that are already on the books as well. With all these taxation balls in the air at once, it'll become increasingly difficult to stay on top of every state's tax legislation and will require as many resources as we can gather as an industry to combat them. Yeah, you know, the most effective way to get people to reduce smoking that history has shown us is to raise the tax on cigarettes. But unfortunately, that is also going to be applied to our product because we're being regulated as a tobacco product. And speaking of that, the next story that we're going to talk about is, of course, everyone's favorite subject, the pill pushers, Big Pharma. Um, Big Pharma's NRT products are seeing a steep in times. According to an article in the London Times, GlaxoSmithKline, a major player in the pharmaceutical smoking cessation industry, has lobbied vigorously on behalf of stringent electronic cigarette regulation in the European Union. Specifically, a leaked memo apparently showed that Glaxo was telling policymakers that electronic cigarettes could be a gateway to smoking and that these products should be regulated as medicines, not as a type of nicotine or tobacco product. They like to use that gateway to smoking thing a lot, Dane. Um, and one of the reasons is, of course, they're in the business of NRTs, nicotine replacement therapy. Ed? According to the article, one of the world's biggest pharmaceutical companies has warned lawmakers that electronic cigarettes could act as a gateway to tobacco. <clears throat> Christopher Snowden also weighed in that the leaked memo in the article he wrote regarding the topic back in February of 2014. This is a blatant attempt at rent-seeking by an ob <clears throat> obvious vested interest. 
We know that the pharmaceutical in <clears throat> industry has been lobbying hard to hamper the growth of e-cigarettes, so it comes as no surprise to find Glaxo using the tired old gateway argument. The truth is that e-cigarettes will only seriously <clears throat> disadvantage the NRT market if they work better as quitting aids. In my experience, in the experience of count, be good for companies like Glaxo as they would create more smokers. NRT companies need need there be <clears throat> excuse me NRT you companies in your throat. yeah I know <laughs> need there to be more smokers just as much as cigarette companies do Snowden also noted that the UK National Smoking Cessation Conference was funded by GlaxoSmithKline and Pfizer he wrote yeah this is the same GlaxoSmithKline that spent a record three billion dollars to combat charges that it had pushed Wellbutrin, an antidepressant, as a drug that would combat weight gain. As usual, both of these companies are main sponsors of the conference. Apparently, there's no problem having corporations that are vociferously against the most promising development in smoking cessation paying for a conference about smoking cessation. Yes, and uh, we had a piece from John Oliver here, but I didn't have time to edit the video, so we're going to pass that over but we will provide you with the link. It's an excellent piece just about Big Pharma and the various underhanded tactics that they use. Um, you know, the reality is that if you work at one of these big medical offices, there's free lunches more days than there aren't, and that is, care that is because of Big Pharma. Um, and, of course, they hire pretty and uh, handsome representatives <laughs> to push their drugs. Uh, but it is kind of shocking uh, how underhanded their, their dealings are with these things. So uh, the next thing we have here is this Wall Street Journal piece about anti-e-cig ads. And there's a print ad that they've come out with. This is brought to you by the CDC. Let me see if I can pull this up. We've got way too many pieces of media here. Here are the CDC ads. Here's one of them. I started using e-cigarettes but kept smoking right until my lung collapsed. Now, last week we talked about the CDC paid promotion for sick people to appear in their ads. Again, you either have to have cancer or you have to be sick as a result of your smoking. If you use e-cigarettes, etc., all the better because they're going to be hitting everything. So they did come out with that print ad this week. and. Um, that is being pushed in, in major news outlets and uh, publications. California state government launched a more direct $7 million media campaign against e-cigarettes last Friday. We are familiar with that. The TV, digital, and outdoor ads deride e-cigarettes as brought to you by the people who brought you lung cancer and come two months after state health officials declared e-cigarettes a health risk. I'm baffled by this statement, okay? I'm baffled by this statement because the majority of legislation being introduced close systems which one might argue are less effective and more attractive to a dual user are being given a free pass from the most stringent restrictions brought to bear on these bills right and it all goes back to that cab money and as long as they're exempt they can be used to help repay the debt for for cab money so Dr. McAfee at the CDC said that if e-cigarette makers want to promote their products as smoking cessation tools, they should apply to be classified as nicotine replacement therapy devices like patches, gums, and lozenges. So they want, he wants them to seek an NRT classification for a good reason, because he knows they probably won't succeed. Such a classification typically requires years of clinical trials. There are hundreds of manufacturers and not a single one has chosen to go down this pathway, said Dr. McAfee. For very good reasons, I might add. If you think the pathway to regulation is fraught with obstacles for vaping as currently classified, you know, we're going to be classified as a tobacco product. Imagine for a moment how difficult it would be to gain classification as an NRT. And it's not something anyone in their right mind should knowingly see. Ed, you had a comment? 
Yeah, because of what he said, which is great, I am right now, I am going to go download that antivirus software. <laughs> <laughs> McAfee? <laughs> Didn't he flee the country? I thought he was uh, living in, like, Tortuga or something. He yeah, was, uh, he was. He fled for tax reasons or something, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's evading the IRS. I, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, agree, I agree with you, though, James. You know, the legislative and legal hoops that are a necessary part of bringing an NRT product to market are far, far too prohibitive for an industry such as ours currently the way it is. It's, it's too expensive, it's too long, and there's going to be too much legislation in between. That's already started. So um, I've got the CNN article in here, but I don't know that we have the actual verbiage from it. Let me go ahead and pull it up here because I know there was a, a point we wanted to make from this. They've got a chart about uh, nicotine delivery, etc. But there is a quote here from the World Health Organization, and that's what we wanted to touch on. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah, uh, so this is a quote from Jean-Francois Eder, and uh, he says, he's been researching the use of e-cigarettes since 2009 and believes they are much safer than conventional cigarettes. The most dangerous way of consuming nicotine is to smoke it, he says. Whilst Eder says that use among young people should be monitored, he believes the role of e-cigarettes in reducing global tobacco consumption is more important. They are a gateway out of smoking. This is a key point. And he's right. the first one I've seen that actually make it with those words. It's not a gateway to smoking. It's a gateway out of smoking. There's always going to be the dual users. There's going to be the people that get led back in. But I'm talking about a non-smoker picking up an e-cig and then deciding suddenly that they want to have, you know, an American spirit. And I'll tell you what, as somebody that smoked full-strength cigarettes, it's not something that I would see myself going back to necessarily. And it, if I'd never smoked them, I don't think I'd ever go back to them after trying vaping. I mean, hey, James, when's the, when's the last time you ever tried that you've tried a cigarette? Um, actually, it's been about nine months ago, two puffs, and I tossed it out the window because I yeah, couldn't yeah. take it. It just, I, I can't believe <sighs> I can't believe they ever tasted good. Yeah, and on top of it, it just it lingered. It lingered for such a oh. long time that that weird taste in your mouth. I couldn't taste food, and I'm like, holy cow! I didn't even smoke half of one, yeah. and already it affected my taste buds. And and so, and for the and for the chat, <coughs> I know I can smell it when I'm driving. When a car in front of me stopped at a light is smoking. Yeah. Who else can smell that now? Now now that oh, you yeah. don't smoke anymore. Yeah, and I, wor I work at a college, and uh, we've got this this long stair hallway down to health organization, and this is the one that we have commentary on. E-cigarettes could be a way to help people quit, but we need more evidence and regulation, says Armand Peruga, program manager for the World Health Organiz Organization's Tobacco-Free Initiative which has celebrated 10 years of its framework for tobacco control whilst at the conference in Abu Dhabi. Um, so again, the World Health Organization has officials that are basically saying that they see the merit in this product. And that that's crazy to me because I don't understand it. They publicly con condemned it and called for an action on vapor products and of course, let's not forget about the recent perceived change of heart that the CDPH has shown regarding e-cigs. I say perceived because I still don't have a bit of faith that they are doing anything more than pandering due to the recent heat produced by not blowing smoke and the outcry against the ad campaign on various social media outlets. Yeah, I, you know, in my opinion, I believe that made, you know, major organizations like the WHO amongst others don't want to be on the wrong side of this issue. Let's remember that the FDA is currently studying electronic cigarettes as we speak. We don't know the depth of their studies, such as you know nicotine content in e-liquid, devices, uses, usage population, etc. Until there's definitive word from the FDA and other major U.S. health organizations, I believe that we'll continue to see conflict. Vaping is giving them the vapors. 
What about the vapors, Blanche? Shouldn't she be overcome by the vapors? Check out California's new ads trashing e-cigarettes. They put the dis in disinformation. Roll it, Carla. The aromatic annual is called tobacco. So that costs millions and perhaps lives for it scares smokers away from quitting real cigarettes, which are far deadlier. They demonize with flimsy lies like these. Seriously, burps contain more facts than that crud. Need I remind you, tobacco-free California, e-cigs don't have tobacco. <laughs> but also, they ignore research showing how vaping gets people like me to quit. Try Googling it, you jerks. They fail to mention that real cigarettes have up to 450 times the toxins of e-cigarettes, and they claim nicotine is as bad as heroin. That's a myth debunked more times than kids at camp. <laughs> so the ads do exactly what they accuse e-cigs of doing, seductively marketing something deadly. It's not an ad, it's propaganda. But for whom? Well, you want your mind blown? Maybe the government doesn't want you to quit smoking, because that's how they make bank. A while back, they made a deal with Big Tobacco to pay for health care costs, about $200 billion, based on cigarettes sold. They knew sales would decline, but now the drop has doubled. See, what they didn't factor in was vaping. More vaping means fewer smokers, and that's less money for the state. Now, this is just a theory, but it holds more water than any hysterical claim made by these falsehood-flinging freaks. They say it's about health, but what if it's really about money? Don't act so surprised. This is government, after all. Yeah, and, and that's, the, that's the takeaway from that piece. Again, he Boom! mentioned directly... <laughs> he mentioned directly that... That it, it's about the money, and it's because they don't want people to quit smoking, and that is true. I, I yeah. firmly believe it, especially now um, having my eyes open to the fact that the master settlement agreement uh, was handled in this way by those 12 states, and those are states that are hotbeds of activity. So it makes a lot of sense. All right. I, so wish, this, we... I wish my vapor would kill the stinking fly flying around the room. <laughs> I have a fly in here. Vapor won't kill it. Second Scientific smoke. testing. Scientific testing. <laughs> you need a fly swatter, Ed. Maybe I'll get you one. Have you seen the bug assault? <laughs> He's got one. I was going to say, why doesn't he use that? He's on a bug assault right now. <laughs> now he's ready. <laughs> Lock and load. All right, so uh, Clive Bates, for those of you who don't know, Clive Bates is absolutely brilliant, and do yourself a favor, check out his website, www.clivebates.com. He wrote a memo to public health grandees, vaping, vapors, and you. So this was targeted at the politicians. And I got to say, he made some excellent points, because I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with some of the research that the ants have uh, released and a lot of their theories. This is what he had to say about this. You can advance your weird theories in paywalled and heavily moderated journals which protect you from symmetric criticism and are closed to most of your critics. Uh, paywalled, for those of you who don't know, uh, when you paywall a site it's you go to click on a link and when you get there it says you have to subscribe or you have to be a member of a certain organization in order to create an account. Um, so that's what paywalling is. Dane? Right. Yeah. Clive he made some very, very good points in that article, and I'll try to quote a couple of them here the best I can. Coordination and conspiracy. You notice and sound the alarm that many vapors seem to act together and say similar things. Tobacco. This is because you don't really understand the bottom-up organizing power of social media. What, are, what you're witnessing has a technical name, 
emergent behavior. This is what you get from complex adaptive systems like social media. People with diverse knowledge share and aggregate thousands of ideas and a kind of natural selection process sorts out who people listen to, how people think and what they do. It never creates hom homogeneity and it has no command and control mechanism. But on some issues, it can take on the appearance of a well-organized campaign offensive. But it isn't well-organized or top-down coordinated, it's emergent behavior. If you engage more interactively in social media rather than using it to make announcements, pronouncements, and denouncements, you'd see this more clearly. The relationship between vapors and public health people. This is what he has to say about that. Your relationship with vapors is asymmetric, and you really do need to understand this. They are the public in public health. They should be a matter of professional interest to you. In your profession, you need to understand them and why they do what they do in order to make professional public health judgments. And I'm going to stop there for a minute and let this sink in. This is not something that is meaningful to a lot of these people. Right. They're, they rest on their laurels. They take in all the accolades of their peers when they produce this type of research. And there's a lot of back padding going on. But when it comes down to the effect on the general public, that's almost dismissed as an afterthought, Dane. It really is. It is. Yeah, it gets lost in the legislative shuffle of breaking their arms, patting themselves on the back. And that's unfortunate and, and something that lobbyists are, are good at controlling. Yeah. So he continues, you need to do this with high standards of professional conduct and to approach them with humility and empathy. You might start by following the seven principles, your own code of conduct. You probably have something to learn and you might even get to understand what inspires them, but they have no similar obligation to you. They have other jobs, other lives, and no professional need to understand you or engage with you. If you think there is a lot of mistrust and misunderstanding on both sides, that's your problem, not their problem. Their interest in you, if any, is that you might spoil what they are doing, that you are making provocative or unfounded remarks about them or what they do, or that you are dismissing their experience as mere anecdote. And that dismissiveness, Dane, is something that's particularly prevalent. And we talked about it a couple weeks ago, and I know... You took some heat when we talked about what legislators are interested in hearing. Of course, the right. personal stories are good, okay? And don't get me wrong, and I know you agree with me that they're good. Those personal experiences are good. And look, what, what did we just talk about? Washington State, okay, MSA agreement. Do you get why they are scrambling to get this money now? Yeah. It's we hear part. so many times of legislators... Um, meeting beforehand before these meetings and quote unquote backdoor meetings and and having experienced that firsthand at a local level you hear legislators tell you and and we were told very frankly at at our meeting that this was decided months ago and this is exactly the reason why it was decided months ago for quite a while this industry was guilty of pointing the fingers at some of the the other associations like the American Heart Association, the American Lung Association, which deserve finger pointing. But in this case, it was a little ill-placed. It was already decided because the state's coffers were so bare and they needed to pay back those cabs and they were so far behind on those payments and so far in default. That's why a lot of these are already settled. Yeah. So, uh, one of the things, unfortunately, Jerry couldn't be with us. One of the things we wanted to talk about next was, of course, the Atlantis, too. Uh, but what I'm going to do instead, because this came across my my desk today, is Farsalinos posted an article. Let me see if I can pull this up. I've got the link on my mobile browser, so I'll have to bring it up here. Um, and I don't think I have it. I don't think I have the link. But basically, Farsalinos posted the results of some testing 
Uh, and this testing had to deal with uh, the amount of nicotine, the, the nicotine concentration levels and consistency in uh, different juice samples that he was testing. And it was also the first time they tested nets. So that naturally extracted tobacco, the stuff that contains the WTAs. Because there's a, been a, a lot of div division amongst the community on whether or not nets are something that is generally considered as safe. Um, so when he did the testing, you can go ahead and read the results. We'll go ahead and provide the link for you. But uh, what he found was that the levels of uh, nitrosamines in WTA liquid was slightly higher, but it was still a great reduction compared to smoking condition, traditional cigarettes. So if you're one of those people, and I know there are some, uh, because I know myself, I used to enjoy the stuff from El Toro, and I don't even know if El Toro still has WTA liquid, but at one time they had naturally extracted tobacco products and they'd actually ship you a bottle with tobacco leaves that you would put in uh, uh, VG and PG and steep it and then a cheesecloth and it was a very messy process but what you ended up with was a liquid that had whole tobacco alkaloids in it and uh, those those net tobaccos can be a lifesaver for somebody who just can't seem to scratch the habit with just a regular e-liquid um, and they provide a valuable missing piece now, that being said, they are slightly higher in nitrosamines, but we're talking about, um, you know, a level of scale compared to cigarettes where it's a negligible risk. So, you know, you can make your own informed decisions. We're all adults here. Hopefully we are. And if you're not, <laughs> why are you watching this show? But uh, Go to anyway, bed. it's a great article, so uh, please check it out when you get a chance. I think that's all we've got on the lineup for tonight. And unfortunately, I'm sorry to say that Jerry got stuck at work. Uh, we're very glad to have him as part of the program, and uh, he will be joining us next week. Don't be sorry. We got an hour in. <laughs> we actually did not go for like an that's hour true. and 45 minutes. We did a good job. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah we, so we miss Jerry, and I know he's, uh, he's pretty bummed that he couldn't be here. But... Uh, yeah. We look forward to seeing them next week. So yeah, yeah so yeah, that, good, and there's the Yee thing that. too. What the Yee thing? Yeah, he's going to talk about the Atlantis next week, and also the Yee the new mm -hmm. Yee Jewel uh, temperature control chip, um, the Bejeweled temperature control chip. Is that um, SX three fifty J? Yeah, and I believe Veritube has a mod too. I can't remember what they call it, but it's an updated version of the SX Mini with that chip. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'm, I'm kind of excited about the new sub-ohm tanks. I'm, I'm curious uh, as to why they dropped down to 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 on the heads, because I'm still skeptical that it'll be able to keep up. But I know there's people that have done reviews on them already, and they seem to like them. One of the great things that I've noticed is that uh, Aspire finally changed to organic cotton. <laughs> and now they are using organic cotton in these new coils, so... Ah, it'll probably burst into flames, according to the... <laughs> yeah, if you dry burn it, it will burst yeah. into flames. And if you're a researcher, that's the first thing you do, isn't it? You oh, yeah. You get those levels of uh, toxins up. Not only All that, right, just, everybody, so that is it good. for this week. Any closing thoughts, gentlemen? Uh, no, have a great week. We'll see you again next Tuesday. Same bad time, same bad channel. Yes, we'll be here. I will be uh, uh, harassed by uh, 10 kindergartners every Ooh. Tuesday before this show now. Exciting. Yeah, because um, uh, soccer started up and I'm the uh, assistant coach. So. Yeah, do you I have mean, a whistle? Yes, I do. Want to hear it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, let me pull my earphones out. Ed reminds me now of Will Farrell from Kicking and Screaming. He's going to go against his, his nemesis, the other soccer coach. Yes, and to played by Mike Dicko. Who, who, uh, <laughs> we, we have a YouTube listener who complained about uh, the noise of us vaping versus the volume level of the videos. So I do apologize for that. Uh, but uh, Ed is now going to blow his whistle quite loudly. <laughs> 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 All 
All right. Good night, everybody. We'll catch you next week. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jeannie. <laughs> Bring that back up. <laughs> All right. Let me go ahead and end the broadcast, and we'll switch over to the Hangout. I think it just crashed. Nice. That's, that's good timing, though. Yeah. Yeah, Jeannie just reminded me that the, when I hit the we're kid still, in the face We're last, still on. We're still on. Yeah, well, no, that's okay. Yeah, last year, uh, when I when I kicked the ball and slammed... Start broadcast. Yes, this is the end of the show. It's not deja vu. Don't have to watch the whole thing again. Good night, everybody. The outro still didn't work. There we go. Good night. Uh.